Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 39 of the course on statistics and probability. Students, you will recall that in the last lecture I discussed with you hypothesis testing regarding the equality of two population means mu1 and mu2. After that, we proceeded to hypothesis testing regarding P, the proportion of successes in a binomial population. In today's lecture, I will begin with hypothesis testing regarding two population proportions. Let me explain this concept with the help of an example. As you now see on the screen, a leading perfume company in a western country recently developed a new perfume which they plan to market under the name fragrance. A number of comparison tests indicate that fragrance has very good market potential. The sales department of the company wants to plan the strategy so as to reach and impress the largest possible segments of the buying public. One of the questions is whether the perfume is preferred by younger women or older women. A standard scent test will be used where each sampled woman is asked to sniff several perfumes, one of which is fragrance and the woman will be asked to indicate which one she likes best. A total of 100 young women were selected at random and each was given the standard scent test. 20 of the 100 women chose fragrance as the perfume that they liked best. Also, 200 older women were selected at random and each was given the same standard scent test. Of the 200 older women, 100 preferred fragrance. Test the hypothesis that there is no difference between the proportions of younger and older women who prefer fragrance. Students, hum is problem ko kis tarah se approach karenge? Sabse pehli cheez ye ke what is success and what is failure. Zahir hai ke yahan pe hum is baat pe interested hain ke hume pata chale ke is particular perfume ko khawateen jo hain wo kitna pasand karti hain aur older or younger women jo hain unme aaya is mamle mein koi farq hai ya nahi hai. Iska matlab ye hua that preferring fragrance is success and not preferring fragrance is failure. Dusri baat ye ke ab hum chuke do populations hain, a population of younger women and a population of older women, to hum kis ko subscript 1 se denote kare hain aur kis ko hum subscript 2 se denote kare hain. Jaisa ke mainne last lecture mein tafseel ke saath aap ke saath baat ki, ye aap ke apne upper hai ke aap kis ko 1 rakhna chahate hain aur kis ko 2. صرف اتنی سی بات ہے کہ جس کو آپ ون رکھیں پھر آپ اس کے مطابق آگے mathematical procedure adopt کریں اگر ہم اس problem میں ون subscript younger women کے لیے استعمال کریں تو P1 کا کیا مطلب ہوگا the proportion of young women who prefer fragrance now what is the first step of our hypothesis testing procedure the null hypothesis and the alternative so, null hypothesis kya hoga students? H naught P1 is equal to P2. Yani, the proportion of younger women who prefers this particular perfume is the same as the proportion of older women who prefer this perfume. And what is the alternative? H alternative P1 is not equal to P2. The second step is the level of significance and if we want to set it as 5%, then of course, our critical region will be Z is greater than or equal to 1.96 or 
z is less than or equal to minus 1.96. ये मैंने इसलिए कहा कि because of the alternative which I just mentioned, this is a two-tail test and half of the 5 percent that is 2 and a half percent is going to be on the right tail and 2 and a half percent on the left tail or uske mutabik jo z values hume milti hain ab tak to aapko yaad ho chuka hoga that they are plus and minus 1.96. Students what is the test statistic in this particular problem? As you now see on the slide z is equal to p1 hat minus p2 hat minus 0 divided by the square root of p c hat q c hat multiplied by 1 over n 1 plus 1 over n 2. In this formula p c hat is equal to total number of successes in the two samples combined divided by the total number of observations in the two samples combined. In other words, p c hat denotes the pooled proportion of successes in the two samples. Achha, ab to aapne kaha phir se confuse honne ka mokha hume hasil ho gaya. Students, aayye zara is pe gaur kare. Baat ye hai ki humara null hypothesis ye hai that p1 is equal to p2. Agar ye such hai and you remember we always begin by assuming that H naught is true or baki tamam process to hai uski sari jo underlying mathematics hai wo is pe based hai that the null hypothesis is true. Then P1 is equal to P2 and I can say that both P1 and P2 they are equal to P where P is the unknown proportion of successes in either of the two populations. Yani hum ye keh rahe hain ki hame wo proportion jo hai uski value malum to nahi hai lekin dono population mein wo barabar hai. Agar hum ye keh rahe hain to phir iska to matlab ye hua na ki both P1 hat and P2 hat they are estimating the same quantity the common population proportion P. To phir students hum ye sochte hain कि हम क्यों ना इन दोनों सैंपल्स की इनफॉरमेशन को कंबाइन कर लें, पूल कर लें, एंड वी गेट एन एस्टीमेट ऑफ पी फ्रॉम दिस कंबाइन्ड इनफॉरमेशन क्यों? इसलिए कि अगर हम कंबाइन कर लेंगे, देन वी विल हैव मोर इनफॉरमेशन एट आवर डिस्पोजल फ्रॉम वेज वी विल डू दिस एस्टीमेशन प्रोसेस। दिस इज द stands for combined and p c hat means the proportion uh, that we comp compute from the combined sample information. Now what is the formula as I mentioned it is the total number of successes in the two samples divided by the total number of observations in the two samples. As you now see on the screen this formula can also be written as n1 p1 hat plus n2 p2 hat divided by n1 plus n2. And if we write the formula in this manner, then we realize that p c hat is the weighted mean of p1 hat and p2 hat. The formula for the weighted mean x bar w is w1 x1 plus w2 x2 over w1 plus w2 and the formula for p c hat is very similar in pattern to the formula of x bar w. It is n1 p1 hat plus n2 p2 hat over n1 plus n2 and we can see that the sample sizes n1 and n2 are acting as the weights. Now students coming back to our test statistic z is equal to p1 hat minus p2 hat minus 0 over 
p c hat into q c hat multiplied by 1 over n 1 plus 1 over n 2. Ye jo formula hai ye hume kis tarah se mila? Agar aap p c hat into q c hat ko bracket ke andar le jayen, then z is equal to p 1 hat minus p 2 hat minus 0 over p c hat into q c hat over n 1 plus p c hat into q c hat over n 2 and you can see the similarity of this particular formula with the formula which we had in the last lecture z equal to x 1 bar minus x 2 bar minus 0 over sigma 1 square over n 1 plus sigma 2 square over n 2 the formula that we had in that situation where we were testing h naught mu 1 is equal to mu 2. I would like to encourage you to work on this point on your own and to see that everything is very similar to what we did before. Bunyadi baat ye hai that we are dealing with the sampling distribution of p 1 hat minus p 2 hat or jab hum standardize karenge to bilkul pehle ki tarah the variable p1 hat minus p2 hat minus its mean which is equal to 0 if our null hypothesis is true p1 minus p2 is equal to 0 divided by the standard deviation which is the square root of p c hat into q c hat over n1 plus p c hat into q c hat over n2 yani asal mein to p q hona chahiye tha na p q over n1 plus p q over n2 lekin chunke p unknown hai isliye we are going to replace it by its estimate p c hat now let us um, compute the value of z so that we can proceed further in this problem as you see on the screen p1 hat comes out to be 20 over 100 because out of the 100 young women who were sampled 20 preferred the perfume fragrance therefore p1 hat is equal to 0 0.20 similarly p2 hat comes out to be 100 over 200 and that is equal to 0 0.50 Substituting these values in the formula for p c hat, we obtain p c hat is equal to 0 0.40. Therefore, q c hat is equal to 1 minus 0 0.40 and that is equal to 0 0.60. Substituting all these values in the formula for z, we obtain z is equal to minus 5.00 all right z ki value to nikal aai minus 5.00 aur aapko yaad hoga ke kuch teh pehle mene kaha ke because it is a two tail test therefore the critical values are minus 1.96 and 1.96 ab ye jo value minus 5.00 aai hai obviously it is lying in the left tail of the distribution as you now see on the screen and because of this we can of course say that we will reject H naught. In other words we conclude that the population proportions are not equal. Students, zahir hai ke agla sawal ye hai ke agar ye barabar nahi hai to is it the younger women or is it the older women who prefer this brand more? Well, of course, we go back to our data and we find that the proportion is higher in the sample of older women than in the sample of younger women. And zahir hai ke yehi waja hai ke hamara jo answer aya hai minus 5.00 that has the negative sign. Hum P1 hat minus P2 hat ki sampling distribution ki baat kar rahe the na and one denotes younger women. So, if the answer is negative, then it means that P1 hat is less than P2 hat. 
yani proportion of younger women who are pre preferring this particular perfume is less than the proportion of older women all right students yahan pe aapko main ek aur mathematical point uh, aapke sath share karna chahti hu ye jo answer aaya it is very much in the tail of the sampling distribution dekhiye hamari critical value thi minus 1.96 left side pe lekin hamara jo answer hai that is minus 5 which is far out in the tail agar hamara level of significance 5% ki bajaye 1% hota then because it is a two tail test our critical value on the left hand side would have been minus 2.575 या माइनस टू पॉइंट फाइव एट और आप नोट कीजिए कि ये जो आंसर हमारा आया है माइनस फाइव दैट इज इवन फर्दर टू द लेफ्ट ऑफ माइनस टू पॉइंट फाइव एट ऐसी सिचुएशन में वी से दैट आवर रिजल्ट इज नॉट ओनली सिग्निफिकेंट बट हाईली सिग्निफिकेंट टू रिपीट व्हाट आई हैव सेड स्टूडेंट्स बात ये हो रही है कि अगर आपका नल हिपोथिस 5 परसेंट लेवल ऑफ सिग्निफिकेंस पे रिजेक्ट हो तो आप कहते हैं कि मेरा जो स्टिटिस्टिक है दैट इज सिग्निफिकेंट इट इज लार्ज इनफ इफ इट इज ऑन द राइट साइड विल से लार्ज इनफ एंड इफ इट इज ऑन द लेफ्ट साइड पर वी विल से इट इज स्मॉल इनफ टू सिग्निफाई दैट आई शुड रिजेक्ट इट्स नॉट अगर हमारा हिपोथिस 5 परसेंट की बजाय 1 परसेंट पे रिजेक्ट हो जाए देन वी से दैट आवर रिजल्ट इज हाईली सिग्निफिकेंट यानी सिर्फ सिग्निफिकेंट सिग्निफिकेंट ही नहीं बल्कि हाईली सिग्निफिकेंट वाई आर वी यूजिंग दिस टर्म इसलिए कि अब द रिस्क ऑफ कमिटिंग टाइप वन एरर हैज बीन रिड्यूस्ड टू as low a level as 1% sirf 1% chance of being wrong ke sath hum ye conclude kar rahe hain that we should reject it not to aisi situation mein we say highly significant students farz kijiye ke is problem mein z came out to be minus 2.20 अब क्या सिचुएशन है देखिए माइनस टू पॉइंट टू जीरो इज लाइंग ऑन द लेफ्ट टेल ऑफ द सैम्पलिंग डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड इट इज टू द लेफ्ट ऑफ माइनस वन पॉइंट नाइन सिक्स बट इट इज टू द राइट ऑफ माइनस टू पॉइंट फाइव एट इसका मतलब ये हुआ कि अगर हम फाइव परसेंट लेवल ऑफ सिग्निफिकेंस रख रहे हैं तब तो हम एज नॉट को रिजेक्ट कर देंगे लेकिन अगर हम लेवल ऑफ सिग्निफिकेंस को रिड्यूस करके सिर्फ वन परसेंट कर दें देन वी आर नॉट एबल टू रिजेक्ट एच नॉट क्योंकि वन परसेंट के हिसाब से तो वो अंदर आ गया है ना इन द एक्सेप्टेंस रीजन तो फिर इसका मतलब क्या बना ये तो कुछ कंफ्यूजिंग बात लग रही है बात ये निकली दैट इफ़ वी आर विलिंग टू टॉलरेट फाइव परसेंट चांस ऑफ कमिटिंग टाइप वन एरर देन we can reject it not but if we are not willing to allow more than 1% chance of being wrong in rejecting it not then we cannot reject it not with this sample information all right let us consolidate some of these ideas with the help of another example as you now see on the slide a candidate for mayor in a large city believes that he appeals to at least 10% more of the educated voters than the uneducated voters he hires the services of a poll taking organization and they find that 62 of 100 educated voters interviewed support the candidate and 69 of 150 uneducated voters support him 
at the 5% level of significance, should this hypothesis be accepted or rejected? Students, aye, is ko usi tarah se step by step tackle karte hain, jis tarah humne pichle wale problem mein kiya. The first thing is, what is success? The preference for this particular candidate is success. Agar wo usko pasand kar rahe hain, to that is success. Agar wo usko nahi pasand kar rahe, to be the mayor of the city, that is failure. The second step is uh, the subscript. Ke hum one subscript kis ke liye rakhe, or two kis ke liye rakhe. Agar hum one subscript educated voters ke liye rakhe, then what will be our null hypothesis and what will be the alternative? As you now see on the slide, in this case, we will write H naught P1 minus P2 is greater than or equal to 0 0.10 and H1 P1 minus P2 is less than 0 0.10. Students, ab ye jo hypothesis form kiya, is pe gaur kijiye. This is quite different from the hypothesis that we had in the last example or the one that we had in the case of testing mu1 equal to mu2. Yahan pe hum ye nahi keh rahe null hypothesis mein that the proportion of educated voters is the same as the proportion of the uneducated voters, the ones who prefer this particular candidate. Hum ye keh rahe hain null hypothesis ke mutabik ki ye jo dono proportions hai na in mein jo difference hai that is at least 10 percent. So, if you look at the slide once again you find that what we have written is in accordance with what we are trying to hypothesize H naught P1 minus P2 that is the proportion of educated voters favoring this candidate minus the proportion of uneducated voters favoring this candidate. This difference is greater than or equal to 0 0.10 that is 10 percent. Or hum bilkul yehi kehna cha rahe the ke wo jo difference hai wo kam as kam 10 percent hai. All right, now that the null is clear Obviously, the alternative hypothesis will be that P1 minus P2 is less than 0 0.10. The second step is the level of significance and as I have said earlier, normally we take it to be equal to 0 0.05. The third step is the test statistic. Students, isko ghar se dekhe, this time we are writing z is equal to p1 hat minus p2 hat minus p1 minus p2 over the square root of p1 hat q1 hat over n1 plus p2 hat q2 hat over n2. All right, ab sara gaur kijiye ke jo pehle problem tha aur ab jo hai usme to kafi fark hai. Students note kare ke pichle problem mein according to the null hypothesis P1 was equal to P2 yani P1 minus P2 was equal to 0. Is liye uske numerator mein humne P1 hat minus P2 hat minus 0 likha wa tha. Ab is waqt aisi situation nahi hai. We are saying according to the null agar hum uske andar jo equal sign hai uske hisab se baat kare to hum keh rahe hain ki p1 minus p2 is equal to 0 0.10 to phir hamara jo formula hai the standardized version of p1 hat minus p2 hat wo phir kya hoga z is equal to p1 hat minus p2 hat minus p1 minus p2 jiski value according to the null hypothesis 0 0.10 hai. So, that is why we write 0 0.10 and not 0. Students, numerator ki baat to tay ho gai. Aapne dekha ki iske saath hi aapka denominator bhi change ho gaya. 
یعنی لاسٹ ٹائم تو آپ کہہ رہے تھے نا کہ سکوئر روٹ آف پی سی ہیٹ کیو سی ہیٹ اوور این ون پلس پی سی ہیٹ کیو سی ہیٹ اوور این ٹو اور اگر اس کو آپ باہر نکال لیں تو پھر وہ بریکٹ کے اندر ون اوور این ون پلس ون اوور این ٹو آ جاتا ہے اس وقت ہم پی سی ہیٹ کمپیوٹ ہی نہیں کرنا چاہ رہے اس لیے کہ پی سی ہیٹ تو ہم نے تب کمپیوٹ کرنا تھا نا ایف بوتھ پی ون ہیٹ اینڈ پی ٹو ہیٹ دے ور ایسٹیمیٹنگ دا سیم کوانٹیٹی دا کامن پاپولیشن پروپورشن پی اس وقت وی آر ناٹ سینگ دیٹ دیٹ دا ٹو پاپولیشنز ہیو دا سیم پروپورشن آف ووٹرز ہو فیور دس پرٹیکولر کینڈیڈیٹ اب تو ہمارا نالے پوت سے یہ کہہ رہا ہے کہ ان پروپورشنز میں کم از کم ٹین پرسینٹ کا فرق ہے تو مثال کے طور پہ اگر ایجوکیٹڈ ووٹرز میں سے سیونٹی پرسینٹ اس کو پسند کرتے ہیں اور ان ایجوکیٹڈ ووٹرز میں سے پچاس فیصد اسے پسند کرتے ہیں تو یہ فرق جو ہے ٹوینٹی پرسینٹ کا یہ ٹین پرسینٹ سے زیادہ ہی ہے نا تو ایسی سچویشن میں یہ تو نہیں کہہ سکتے نا کہ پی ون از ایکول ٹو پی ٹو پروپورشن آف پیپل ہو آر فیورنگ ہم ان دا فرسٹ پاپولیشن از دا سیم ایز دا پروپورشن آف پیپل ہو آر فیورنگ ہم ان دا سیکنڈ پاپولیشن اس ساری کہانی کا لب لباب یہ ہے اسٹوڈنٹس کہ وی آر ناٹ گوئنگ ٹو کمپیوٹ پی سی ہیٹ ان دس پرٹیکولر سچویشن P1 hat is estimating P1 and P2 hat is estimating P2. Lehaza, hum seedha seedha P1 or Q, P2 ki jaga pe P1 hat or P2 hat hi substitute karenge in our formula of Z. So, as you once again see on the screen, our test statistic in this particular problem is given by Z is equal to P1 hat minus P2 hat minus 0.10. This value we get according to the null hypothesis. And this whole quantity divided by the square root of P1 hat Q1 hat over N1 plus P2 hat Q2 hat over N2. The next step is to compute the value of Z. Now, P1 hat is equal to 62 over 100, which is 0 0.62. So that Q1 hat is equal to 1 minus 0 0.62, and that is 0 0.38. Similarly, P2 hat is equal to 0 0.46. So that Q2 hat is equal to 0 0.54. Substituting these values in the formula for Z, Z comes out to be 0 0.95. Students, what is the fifth step? Obviously, the critical region. Ab, uh, is this a two-tailed test? No. What was the null hypothesis? P1 minus P2 is greater than or equal to 0 0.10. Lekin aapko yaad hai na, ke it is the alternative jis ka sign hum dekhte hain to determine whether it is a right tail test or a left tail test. So, is problem may, what is the alternative? P1 minus P2 is less than 0 0.10. Iska matlab ye hua that we are going to talk about the left tail of the sampling distribution. Hamara pura ka pura jo area hai, level of significance ke tehet, that has to lie on the left tail of the sampling distribution. Or level of significance kya tha? 0.05. So, what is the critical value? Minus 1.645. Ab tak to aapko yaad hoi chuki hogi. Now, what is the last step? The conclusion? What is our Z value students? Aapne dekha ke hamari Z value aai 0.95. تو ٹیل میں ہونا تو ایک طرف it is not even negative it is very much in the acceptance region therefore we 
except H naught. And what was H naught? That P1 minus P2 is greater than or equal to 0 0.10. Iska kya matlab hua? Wo jo mayor ka khayal tha na? That he appeals to at least 10 percent more of the educated voters as compared with the uneducated ones. That belief is supported by this particular data set. Yani, is data se aisa koi evidence nahi mila ke jis ki wajah se us case belief ko hum contradict kare. Students, we have had a detailed discussion regarding testing P1 equal to P2 or P1 minus P2 is equal to some proportion. Taken is sari discussion mein humne ye baat nahi kahi ke why are we using the Z statistic to conduct these tests. The reason is I hope obvious ye baat to pehle kahi gai thi na that if the sample size is large and neither P nor Q is very close to 0 then the binomial distribution tends to the normal distribution. Ye jo example humne kiye main aapko encourage karungi ke aap inko dobara study kare and see for yourself whether you would like to decide whether or not n is large in these problems. Ek uh, population ho to zahir hai ke ek hi n ki baat ho rahi hogi and if there are two populations then you are talking about both n1 and n2. All right, students, it is now time to start another very interesting topic and that is tests based on the T distribution. Abhi tak humne bohat saare test conduct kiye aur bohat saare intervals bhi estimate kar liye but all of them were based on the standard normal distribution. There are situations where you will be testing about mu or about mu 1 minus mu 2 but the Z statistic is no longer applicable and that is the situation when we will be talking about the T distribution, a very important distribution in statistical theory. So, before we go to those tests, of course, first of all, I should introduce the T distribution to you in a formal manner. As you now see on the screen, the T distribution is well known as the student's T distribution. Student is the pseudonym of the person who derived this particular distribution. The mathematical equation of the T distribution is f of x is equal to 1 over square root of nu multiplied by the beta function beta half comma nu by 2 and this whole expression multiplied by 1 plus x square over nu whole raised to minus nu plus 1 over 2 and this function is valid from minus infinity to plus infinity. Students, ye to bohat hi zyada complicated equation hai aur aap yakeenan is martaba to haq bajanib honge agar aap confuse hone ki koshish kare. The reason why I gave you this expression is to consolidate in your mind the fact that for any curve that you can draw on the graph paper, for any mathematical curve that you may draw, there is of course a mathematical equation. But students, as far as you are concerned, all that I would like you to note is that in this equation, there is only one quantity that can be called the parameter of the T distribution and that is nu. Ye nu jo hai, ye isi tarah se hai jis tarah se mu hai. It is a Greek letter and we use it for the one lone parameter of the T distribution. What I would like to concentrate on are the properties of the T distribution and 
as you now see on the screen. The first property is that the T distribution is bell shaped and symmetric about the value T equal to 0 and it ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity. Students, aapne note kiya ke maine kaha ke it is bell shaped, it is symmetric about 0 and it ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity. To phir aap soch rahe honge ke is mein aur standard normal distribution mein kya fark hai? Uska mean bhi to 0 hai aur wo bhi to symmetric aur bell shaped hai aur wo bhi to minus infinity se infinity tak jati hai. Students, the difference is that generally speaking, the T distribution is wider than the standard normal distribution. And as you now see on the screen, the parameter nu is that quantity that determines the shape of the T distribution. Students, nu is called the degrees of freedom of the T distribution. And we find that as the degrees of freedom increase, the T distribution becomes narrower and narrower. Achha, abhi maine aap se jo baat kahi, us mein do teen points hai. Pehli baat ye, that the parameter of the T distribution is called degrees of freedom. Ab ye bari interesting term hai, degrees of freedom. Aap chi square distribution or f distribution jo hum iske baat karenge note karenge aap ke wahan pe bhi we have this term so i will be explaining the reason why these parameters are called degrees of freedom um, i will be explaining this later at the moment i just want you to concentrate on this one point that it is that one quantity that occurs in the equation of the t distribution or jiske change hone par hamari distribution change hoti hai is tarah se that as the degrees of freedom increase the distribution gets narrower and narrower and narrower but students there is a limit to how narrow it can become aap ye na samjhe ke wo itni narrow hoti chali jayegi ke wo dono side ek dusre ke sath mil jayengi it is not possible what happens is that as nu tends to infinity, the T distribution tends to coincide with the standard normal distribution. Yani standard normal distribution jo hai, aap ye T distribution tight hote hote hote, uske saath coincide kar sakti hai, usse aur zyada tight nahi ho sakti. Alright, let us look at some other properties of the T distribution. As you now see on the screen, the T distribution has a mean of 0 when nu is greater than or equal to 2. The mean does not exist when nu is equal to 1. Students, ye jo baat mene kahi that the mean does not exist when nu is equal to 1, ye zyada mathematical point hai. Agar aap uski equation ko dekhen aur phir uska mean compute karein, तो आप देखेंगे कि अगर न्यू की वैल्यू 1 हो तो आपका जो इंटीग्रल है दैट विल नॉट कन्वर्ज आई वुडेंट वांट यू टू गेट वरीड अबाउट दिस पॉइंट आप इसका जो पहला हिस्सा है उस पे गौर कीजिए और इसको यूं समझ लीजिए कि जनरली स्पीकिंग द मीन ऑफ द टी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इज जीरो तो ये तो बहुत ही सिंपल सी बात है जब हम कह रहे हैं that it is bell shaped and it is symmetric about the value 0 to phir zahir hai ye to hum bahut pehle pad chuke hain ke for any symmetric curve the mean is in the middle aur is case mein agar 0 ke around symmetry hame mil rahi hai to phir saaf zahir hai that the mean will be 0 next let us talk about the median of the T distribution. Isn't it obvious students that the median will also be 0? Isliye ke hum bahut pehle ye baat bhi pad chuke hain that for any hump shaped symmetric distribution the mean, median 
and also the mode they are exactly equal. This brings me to the next property of the T distribution and that is that the mode is also equal to 0. Let us talk about the spread of the distribution as you now see on the slide the variance of the T distribution is given by sigma square is equal to nu over nu minus 2 and this formula is valid for all values of nu greater than 2. Now if you pay attention to this formula students it is obvious that the numerator is greater than the denominator implying that sigma square is greater than 1. In other words, it is greater than the variance of the standard normal distribution. After all, do you not remember that the standard deviation and the variance of the standard normal distribution is exactly equal to 1? Students, you have seen that variance ka jo formula abhi aapke saamne present kiya. that is confirming what I said earlier. Agar t distribution ka variance 1 se zyada hai, to iska matlab hai ke standard deviation 1 se zyada hai. Yani standard normal distribution ki jo standard deviation hai, usse zyada. And that means that the t distribution is more spread out than the standard normal distribution, generally speaking. Alright, now that we have discussed some of the basic properties of the t distribution, students, let us concentrate on its application in statistical inference. Ye sirf testing mein nahi, balke interval estimation mein bhi humare kaam aati hai in one important situation. Aur jo situation ab mein aapke saamne present karne lagi hoon, aap se mein request karungi ki us pe ghor ki jhe. There are three important points aur agar ye teeno baate hoon, then we should not apply the Z statistic, rather we need to apply the T statistic because it has been mathematically proved that in this particular situation T is the distribution and T is the statistic that we should use. As you now see on the screen, if the population from which the sample is being drawn is normally distributed. The population variance sigma square is unknown and the sample size is small that is less than 30. Then the statistic x bar minus mu over s over square root of n where s is the square root of sigma x minus x bar whole square divided by n minus 1, this statistic follows the t distribution having n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Students, aye, is point ko understand karne ki koshish karte. Sabse pehle ye tasavvur ki jiye that you have a normally distributed population. Ye baat to bohat afa ho chuki hai ki bohat se phenomena approximately normally distributed hote hain. Maslan, height, weight and so many other phenomena. To ab aap pehli baat to ye ho gai ki humare paas ek normally distributed population hai. Ab aap is me se small size ka sample randomly draw kar lein. Maybe it, the size is 15, 20. It is quite a small size. Um, students, ye sample I draw kar liya, to zahir hai ki main iska mean aur iska variance compute kar sakti hu. I will get x bar and s square for this sample. Agar main small s square nikalna chahti hu, jo ke main is case mein nikalna hi chahti hu, then of course the denominator of the formula will have n minus 1 rather than n. So, this example draw kiya tha na, uske liye x bar bhi mil gaya aur s square bhi mil gaya. Ab tasavvur ki jiye that you are not drawing just one sample from this population, but you are drawing 
all possible samples of this particular size from this normal population. So, students, ye to crore ha samples a jayenge na. Aapne dekha hi tha pehle lectures mein ke jab hum without replacement ki baatein bhi karte the, to hamara jo result aata tha, wo itna bada number hota tha aksar akat. Aur agar with replacement ki baat ho, to usse bhi kahin zyada. To aap tasavur kar sakte hain ke agar ek large population hai, aur usme se ek small size ka sample aap leen, to agar ek ki bajaye all possible leene ho, so, crore ha samples a jayenge. And then, for every one of those samples, you will have an x bar and an s square. Ab ye crore ha x bars or s squares aapko available hain. To, aap ye quantity, jo abhi aapne screen pe dekhi, ye quantity bhi to, करोड़ हा मर्तबा कंप्यूट कर सकते हैं ना व्हिच क्वांटिटी एक्स बार माइनस म्यू ओवर एस ओवर स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ एन अब देखिए इसमें सब कुछ आपके पास है एक्स बार एस एन द सैंपल साइज ऑफ कोर्स यू नो लेकिन म्यू इज नॉट देयर तो फिल वक्त आप इस हवाले से सोचें कि अगर हम टेस्टिंग कर रहे हैं एंड वी ऑलवेज बिगिन बाय अस्यूमिंग दैट इट्स नॉट इज ट्रू तो फिर म्यू इज इक्वल टू समथिंग वो हमने एच नॉट के तहत कहा होगा ना दैट म्यू इज इक्वल टू समथिंग तो वो जो नंबर है वो आप उसमें डाल दें तो फिर ये क्वांटिटी कंप्यूट हो गई ना फॉर वन सैंपल एंड फॉर दोज मिलियंस ऑफ सैंपल्स दैट यू हैव ड्रॉन मिलियंस ऑफ सच क्वांटिटीज आर नाउ अवेलेबल टू यू हम जो कह रहे हैं वो ये है कि ये जो अंबार है हमारे पास इस कस्म की क्वांटिटीज का अगर आप इनकी फ्रीक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन बना लें प्रोबेबिलिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन कंस्ट्रक्ट कर लें एंड देन यू ग्राफ दिस डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन स्टूडेंट्स यू विल गेट अ कर्व व्हिच इज द टी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन हैविंग एन माइनस वन डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम ये जिस तरह से मैंने आपके साथ ये सारी बात की ये एक uh, non mathematical tariqa hai isko explain karne ka but the point in my mind is that i would like to have you have a basic idea of what we are talking about of course agar hum isko mathematical tarike se hum baat kare to that may be a bit too advanced so the gist of the whole discussion is that we are now dealing with a sampling distribution which is the t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom let us apply this to interval estimation and for this i would like you to have a look at the example that we now have on the screen the masses in grams of 13 ball bearings selected at random from a batch are 21.4 23.1 and so on. Calculate a 95% confidence interval for the mean mass of the population of ball bearings supposed to be normal from which these 13 ball bearings were drawn. Students, you have seen that the three sharaits that I have seen before have been fulfilled in fulfill this question. Mein. The population of the masses of the ball bearings is normally distributed. The variance of this population is unknown and the sample size is small. It is only 13. Hence, our sampling distribution is not Z but T and according to the same logic as we had in the case of Z, our confidence interval this time is as you now see on the screen x bar plus minus t alpha by 2 at n minus 1 degrees of freedom multiplied by s over square root of n. Aapko yaad hoga ke jab z statistic tha us waqt hamara formula tha x bar plus minus z alpha by 2 sigma over square root of n. Aur agar sigma available nahi tha to 
एस हम रख देते थे उसकी जगह पे सो यू कैन सी द सिमिलैरिटी अब सवाल ये है कि टी अल्फा बाई टू जो है एट एन माइनस वन डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम उसकी वैल्यू कैसे मिलेगी स्टूडेंट्स जस्ट एज वी हैव अ टेबल ऑफ एरियाज अंडर द स्टैंडर्ड नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन वी ऑल्सो हैव अ टेबल ऑफ एरियाज अंडर द टी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन द वैल्यूज इन द टॉप रो आर द एरियाज टू द राइट ऑफ द टी वैल्यूज दैट वी वुड लाइक टू डिटर्मिन एंड द वैल्यूज इन द फर्स्ट कॉलम आर डिनोटिंग द डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम इन दिस एग्जाम्पल बिकॉज एन इज इक्वल टू थर्टीन देर फोर एन माइनस वन इज इक्वल टू ट्वेल्व एंड इफ वी वॉन्ट नाइन्टी फाइव परसेंट कॉन्फिडेंस देन we will have to look under 0.025 and when we do so and look under 0.025 against 12 degrees of freedom our value comes out to be 2.179 all right now that we have found the value of t of course we have to find x bar and small s and from the values that we have x bar comes out to be 24.21 and s is equal to 1.77 substituting these values in the formula of the confidence interval we obtain 24.21 plus minus 2.179 multiplied by 1.77 divided by the square root of 13 solving this expression the 95% confidence interval for mu comes out to be 23.14 to 25.28 students aapne dekha ki hum ye keh rahe hain that on the basis of 95% confidence we can say that the mean mass of those ball bearings lies somewhere between 23.14 grams and 25.28 grams. और आप देखिए कि कितना इंटरेस्टिंग है कि इतना छोटा सैंपल आपने ड्रॉ किया ओनली साइज 13 एंड यू आर एबल टू मेक एन एस्टिमेशन फॉर द मीन ऑफ द इंटायर पॉपुलेशन विच कंसिस्ट ऑफ थाउजेंड्स अपॉन थाउजेंड्स ऑफ बॉल बियरिंग्स इन टूडेज लेक्चर स्टूडेंट्स वी डिस्कस्ड hypothesis testing regarding p1 minus p2 and after that we began the discussion of statistical inference based on the t distribution i would like to encourage you to attempt a few questions on these concepts and next time we will be discussing the t distribution in further detail best of luck and allah hafiz